Welcome everyone. Welcome to this RSAT webinar on river basin delineation based on NASA digital elevation data. My name is Amita Mehta and we will be conducting this one hour session uh, along with my colleague Sean McCartney. Overall training objectives are to become familiar with HydroSheds, which is a database or a web-based tool, hydrological data and maps based on shuttle elevation derivatives at multiple scales. And the website is given here. Also, specifically, we will learn to delineate a river basin and sub-basins based on a geographic location and also determine drainage direction in a river basin and sub-basins within that basin. Outline of today's webinar is we'll see a brief introduction about RSET, importance of river basin delineation, overview of NASA digital elevation data, then we will have an overview of hydrosheds and Sean McCartney will demonstrate how hydrosheds is used for river basin delineation and drainage direction detection. So about RSET. RSET is uh, NASA's Applied Remote Sensing Training Program. It is part of NASA's Applied Sciences Capacity Building Program, and it is set up to empower the global community through remote sensing training with the goal of increasing the use of earth science in decision-making through training for policymakers, environmental managers, and other professionals, both in public and private sectors. <laughs> As you can see on this side, RSEC conducts training in these thematic areas, starting with water resources, air quality, uh, eco and uh, land management, and disasters. RSEC completed 10 years now, and we started in 2008, and as you can see, since then, more than 100 trainings, 13,000 plus participants, and many organizations have taken trainings, and as you can see, uh, disasters, water, eco, and air quality, uh, the, the size show how many people have taken this training over the years. Our set website is given here with more information. As you can see, there are trainings that are fundamental of remote sensing trainings. Uh, also, there are disasters, health and air quality, land and water resources trainings online, as well as in-person training information is available from this website. And we also have a listserv, which you can join to stay informed about our set activities. Those of you who have taken our set webinars, we sometimes have um, introductory and advanced webinar with multiple sessions. This is a unique webinar in the sense that it is a single session and it's a very specific topic about river basin delineation. And so we'll start with why is it important uh, to delineate a river basin? First of all, what is a river basin? So it's an area of land that drains water into a river and its tributaries. And you can look at this Indus River Basin on right hand side. Here's the main Indus River, but you can see all the tributaries and there are small streams going into these tributaries. So this entire area drains into this river. So that's the basin. So a river basin usually has multiple drainage catchments as shown here within these streams. Um, and uh, or their watershed, they are separated by ridges and hills. They are called drainage divides. Each watershed in a river basin collects rain and or snow water and drains to a common outlet. It could be a stream or a tributary, a lake or a wetland. But eventually, they, that water goes into this main river. So entire basin eventually contributes to the main river. And that's why it's important to delineate this area to see how much water from which area is going into this river. So a river basin consists not only of surface water, but also underlying groundwater. So why delineate a river basin? First of all, uh, land surface processes, um, precipitation, storm water, and wastewater runoff within a river basin have substantial impact on quantity and quality of the water draining in the river. 
Delineation of the basin is crucial for planning for water resources and flood management. And delineation of watersheds within the basin is also crucial as it allows monitoring amount of water drained by each watershed to the river channel. And you can see an example here on the right hand side. Uh, this is the Parana River Basin. It's a transboundary river in South America, uh, spanning Brazil, Argentina, Paraguay, these countries. And what is shown here is that this is the entire Parana Basin, and these are the sub-basins within. And precipitation, based on NASA Global Precipitation Measurement Mission, uh, combined with uh, multiple satellites, it's a product called iMERGE, is shown here in millimeter per month. This is average between April 2014 and June 2018. The point is that different watersheds um, within this basin, they contribute different precipitation, different amount of water to the river. So for water, and it's not just precipitation, but land surface characteristics, vegetation, evapotranspiration, soil type, terrain, they all contribute uh, how water quantity and quality uh, from each watershed contributes to the main river. And so it is important to delineate these areas for effective water resources management as well as flood management. So river basin delineation is usually based on um, elevation data. So topography, elevation and slopes, they generally determine boundaries of drainage divides of a river basin and between sub-basins. And NASA has a um, data set, a digital elevation data from a Space Shuttle, a Shuttle Radar Topography Mission or SRTM that has been widely used for determining boundaries or river basin. This was one of the first data sets providing uh, digital elevation uh, globally. And an example is shown here on the right hand side. This is over uh, Tanzania and this is 30 meter SRTM data elevation data. This is 90 meter uh, resolution data. As you can see, uh, the, the terrain can be seen. You can see the channel in, channels in between. So you can see where the drainage divide is. And so these data are widely used. And so what we're going to do next is have a very brief um, introduction to SRTM and then move on to hydrosheds. How hydroshed uses SRTM to delineate rivers. So this is terrain data from Shuttle Radar Topography Mission. Here's the website for more information. And here it was flown, SRTM was a synthetic aperture radar, a C-band radar that flew on Space Shuttle Endeavour uh, as shown here. And it completed 176 orbits around the Earth in 11 days in 2000. Uh, it generated digital elevation maps of all land between 60 north and 56 south latitude, which is about 80% of Earth's total land mass. And SRTM uses, uses interferometry to generate topographic elevation maps. Um, so it, it throws a pulse and then it receives back uh, reflected waves at two different times and then based on that topography is derived. Uh, some details of this data are provided into appendix and also how to access this data is also available from the appendix. Hydrosheds, which is used for river basin network based on SRTM is shown here that any of these websites can be used and hydrosheds, it provides data sets of stream networks, river basin boundaries, drainage detections, flow accumulations, distances and river topography information, topology information. Hydrosheds uses SRTM as I mentioned before, and here is a snapshot of how it looks. So we will have a, we will have a demonstration of Hydrosheds by Sean McCartney, but here are a few points. Here is a website where you can find technical details of dataset development where data void filling is performed, stream identification and hydrologic conditions are derived by using GIS. There are spurious features found in the data sets have been removed by inspecting the data, coastal zone weeding to reduce the impact of mangroves and vegetation on digital elevation data is also performed. Also based on known river courses, 
extreme burning is done uh, onto the elevation surface and modeling valley courses to improve river delineation especially in low-lying areas is also performed comparison with in situ data and validation uh, has such indicated that there is more uncertainty in in elevation data when in flat areas and if there are very uh, densely vegetated areas so what is available from hydrosheds so data are available you can download freely and they are available with this file name convention extent data type and resolution so extent is by continents as you can see and we will have a demonstration of that and then there is data type these are all the data types available digital elevation model hydrologically condition elevation drainage directions flow accumulation river network or streamlines and drainage basin so these are the data sets available from hydrosheds and they're all at different resolutions as we see here so these are the parameters we just saw available from hydrosheds um, so these are wild field digital elevation model these are raster data um, elevation data uh, direction and flow accumulation there are rasters and networks uh, and drainage basins are given as vectors and they have resolution varying from uh, three arc second to about 15 arc second and these data are available you can use as binary images or also as banded interleaved by line or bill format data these are available uh, available in geographic format can be um, handled by either ESRI ArcMap or QGIS as we will see later one last point here is that the flow direction or drainage direction is uh, according to ESRI flow direction numbers and there are eight possible directions for uh, flow direction so that the data will be in form of these numbers they indicate these directions so with that brief introduction uh, now we will have a demonstration of actually how to delineate river basin and watersheds within that and I invite Sean McCartney to demonstrate hydrosheds for river basin delineation and determining drainage direction. Sean? Thank you, Mita. Just to remind everybody what the objectives of this demonstration are, uh, we will be delineating a river basin and sub-basins based on a geographic location. We will be determining the drainage direction or flow within that river basin and sub-basins and we will be processing and visualizing everything uh, using open source software. So I'm very excited to be leading this demonstration of hydro sheds. First thing I like to do when starting any project is to create a working folder uh, for my project. In this case, on my desktop, I've created a folder or directory uh, named Potomac Basin. And if I open that folder, you can notice that I have five subfolders. And I gave each of these subfolders a very explicit name uh, for the data which I'll be downloading and adding to these folders. So you can see I have the basin outline, DEM stands for Digital Elevation Model, uh, Drainage Direction, Hydro Basins, and River Network. And I also have a CSV file, which I will now show you here. This CSV file was created using Apache Open Office. This is a, um, an office suite of products which are all open source. And you can see within the spreadsheet, I've, I have two columns and two rows, um, and it's for the longitude and latitude of a specific geographic uh, location. So now that I have this file, I'm going to name it Harper's Ferry, West Virginia, because that is the city uh, where these, uh, these coordinates fall. And once I have this saved as a CSV file, I will then go and launch QGIS. In this case, uh, for this demonstration, you can see we're using QGIS version 3.8, also known as Zanzibar. I'm going to go up to the upper left and create a new project. And then to add the CSV file, I'm going to come up to this icon, which is the Open Data Source Manager. And when this opens, I'm going to make sure I've selected delimited text on the column on the left. And for the file name, I'm going to add the Harpers Ferry, Harpers Ferry West Virginia 
.csv file. I'm going to make sure the file format corresponds to that file extension. And then for the geometry definition, I'm going to make sure that the X field is uh, signified as longitude and the Y field as latitude. And once I have that, I'm going to add that point. And now you can see we have that point showing on our map canvas. To provide a little bit more context, instead of having a blank canvas, I'm going to go up to the web, uh, uh, web button on the menu bar and come to Quick Map Services and come to Google, and I'm going to add Google Terrain. And if I scroll out, you can now see that, in fact, this point uh, does fall within Harper's Ferry. And Harper's Ferry is in the eastern part of the United States. We have Washington, D.C., the capital of the United States, uh, and some of the mid-Atlantic section. So zooming back in, we see that Harper's Ferry falls uh, right on the confluence, actually, of two different rivers, the Potomac River and the Shenandoah River. And we are going to be delineating the uh, greater river basin uh, for the Potomac Basin. So I'm going to come down here. I'm going to make sure in the bottom right-hand corner that the uh, coordinate reference system is, in fact, WGS84, which it is. So I, if it weren't, I would click on this button and I would make sure that I specify that coordinate system. But since it's already in that reference system, I will leave things as they are. Next thing I'm going to do is save this map project. So I'm going to come up to the top. I'm going to click, click Save As. And I'm going to navigate to the working folder, which again is named Potomac Basin. And I'm going to save this as Potomac Basin and I'm going to save it within my working folder. So now I have a georeferenced location, which we are going to be able to delineate our river basin, and we now have a map project with a base map. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go and download the river basins um, from the HydroSheds website. So for those who are not familiar with HydroSheds, I know Amita has described it in some detail, but I highly recommend you to go to hydrosheds.org and explore the website on your own. There is a lot of information on here in terms of you know, how the uh, data was developed, uh, the quality of the data, how it was processed, uh, the availability based on uh, the geography that you're looking for, uh, different data layers. Um, they have some frequently uh, asked questions, and within the hydro basins, which we will be using to delineate our river basin, there's also a lot of information on the methodology in which they used to delineate all the sub-basins within each basin. So I highly recommend you to explore this more on your own. For the sake of this demonstration, I'm going to move on. So we're now within hydro basins, and I'm going to come up to here, and I'm going to click Download. And I'm going to come down to the hydro basins drop-down. And I'm going to choose, we have two options here. We have the standard without lakes and the customized with lakes. I'm going to choose customized with lakes. And I'm going to come to North America and Caribbean. And then I'm going to choose hydro basins uh, numbers 7 through 10. And then I'm going to come back to the top. And I will click select download files. And you can see a window opens where you add your email and then submit the request. I have actually already uh, submitted this request and I have already put this within my subfolder. The next thing I want to download is, I'm going to clear this, and I'm actually going to go to Basin Outlines. And in this uh, case, I'm going to download from the 15 second resolution. And I'm going to choose NA for North America. And I'll do the same thing I just did, click Download Selected Files. And in this case, I would again add my email address and click the Submit Request. But again, I've already taken the step and I've already downloaded this data. So in this case, I am going to <clears throat> show you. Um, if I go to the, um, the Basin Outline, you can see I actually have, in fact, downloaded this file. It's sitting in my subdirectory. And I've also have a Hydro Basins folder in which I've included all of the downloaded data that I just showed how to do that. So if I want to add the data to my map, I can do this in two ways. I can either drag and drop. 
So in this case, I will find the shape file for the North American river basins, and I can drag and drop this to the base map. I can also do this by going to the toolbar and clicking on uh, Data Source Manager and selecting the file this way. So if I pan out by zooming to the later, you can see I have delineated river basins for all of North America and the Caribbean. And uh, since I'm only uh, concerned about one specific location, and that location is in fact in Harpers Ferry, West Virginia, um, what I want to do is be able to subset just that river basin uh, that falls, uh, that intersects with the, uh, the location of Harpers Ferry, West Virginia. So what I want to do is take a subset of this one basin that we can see here. And to do that, I'm going to come up to Vector, and I'm going to go to research tools and I can go to select by location. In this case I'm going to select from the river basin uh, shapefile which is the one that's already selected and I'm going to want it to intersect with the Harpers Ferry West Virginia point. And yes I want to create a new selection so if I click run you can see I now have that uh, river basin selected. And so now I want to save that as its own shapefile. So I'm going to right click. I'm going to <clears throat> export. And very important to save the selected features as. And I will make sure that this is going to be uh, saved as Potomac Basin, which is the name of this river basin. And I'm going to make sure that this is going to be saved in the desktop. Uh, which is where I'm going to navigate to now. And it's going to be saved in the Potomac Basin, and I will click Save. And you can now see that the file path is just to that. It's going to be the desktop within the working folder and then saved as Potomac Basin Shapefile. And everything else looks good, so I'm going to click OK. And we now have a Potomac Basin uh, river basin, which has been um, broken out from the other basin. So I'm going to remove the North America river basin because we no longer need that. So we now have a delineated river basin for the Potomac River. But we also want to be able to delineate the sub-basins. So if I do what I just did before, and I can come to Vector, and I can click on the data set. In this case, this is going to be from the hydro basins and I can come down here and I'm going to select the different sub basins that we just downloaded. If you can see that I'm, I'm clicking on each of the shape files for these. There's a lot of different files but the ones that we want are the .shp and I have now selected the basins 7 through 10. I'll click open. They will appear in the vector data set. I will click add and then close. You can now see in the layers panel, we have uh, four different sub-basin layers, as well as the Potomac Basin layer that we just created. Since we there's a lot of noise on this, and we are only interested in the sub-basins that fall within the Potomac Basin, what we're going to do is we're going to clip the sub-basins by this Potomac Basin file that we just created. To do that, we're going to go back up to the menu bar. We're going to click Vector. We're going to go to Geoprocessing Tools, and we're going to go to Clip. And when this window opens, we are going to take each of these, uh, these sub-basin layers one by one. So the input layer is going to be the one of the sub-basins. And I'm going to clip it by the Potomac Basin uh, file that we just created. And I am going to call this. Um, level 10 uh, river basin and I want to save this within the working folder and so I'm going to go back to that working folder now and Potomac Basin and again I'm going to save this as level 10 uh, Potomac Basin and I'm going to click save and then I'm going to click run so you can see we now have a subset of that, and I'm going to rename this in the menu bar. I'm going to call this Level 10 Potomac Basin. 
Let me try that one more time. All right. So once we have that, I'm going to remove the other layer that we just subset that from. And I'm going to drag this down below the Potomac Basin. And we're going to repeat those steps for each of the subsequent basins. So now I'm going to do this for subbasin level 9. And again, I'm going to use the Potomac Basin. And I'm going to just enter in sub level 9 subbasin. I'm going to click Run. And you can see now this appears as well in the Layers uh, panel. So again, I'm going to rename this layer as well. And I'm going to call this level nine. Hold on, why isn't this working? I'm sorry. Level nine Potomac Basin. And again, I'm going to remove this layer because we no longer need it. And I'm going to drag level nine above level 10. And I'm going to repeat this two more times for the subsequent basins. Um, this time I'm going to do level 8 and we're going to call this level 8. Click run. <clears throat> Rename this. And again I'm going to drag this above level 9. And I'll remove this layer because we don't need it anymore. And I'll do this one last time for level seven. So now we have, I'm going to remove this, great, and now what we have are a subset of the Potomac Basin with sub-basins level 1, uh, I'm sorry, level 7, level 8, level 9, and level 10. So these are all the sub-basins within the Potomac River Basin. So what we've done now is successfully delineated the basin and all of its sub-basins. Um, if you wanted to uh, you know, select any one of those uh, basins for further analysis, obviously you could do that at this time. And now it's important to discuss the extent because to be able to download the, um, the uh, drainage direction, we're going to need to know what the extent of this is so we can download the correct data. So if I right click on the Potomac Basin and go to properties um, and I click on information on the left hand column you can see there is a row here that defines the extent and this is going to be the lat long for the um, the bottom left uh, which is the uh, southwest uh, uh, extent as well as the top right or the northeast extent of the um, of this file so taking this information what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the HydroSheds website and we're now going to go to the drainage direction and you'll soon see why it was important that we have the extent ready. I'm going to select the flow direction three second resolution grid. <clears throat> I'm going to select North America because that is where the uh, Potomac River Basin is located. And based on the coordinates that we're able to uh, derive from the, uh, the extent of the Potomac River Basin, I know that I'm going to want to select the uh, north latitude, west, uh, north 35 latitude, west 80 longitude, uh, 5 by 5 tile, as well as the north 40, uh, west 80 uh, longitude uh, file as well. The coordinates this refers to, the north 35 and west 80 longitude, refers to the uh, bottom left point of this tile, of this 5x5 tile. So again, the north 35 and west 80 
uh, five by five tile corresponds to the southwest corner of this extent. That's good to know when you're downloading the data. So again, I'm gonna take the two selected five by five tiles for the flow direction. And again, I'm going to collect, click on download selected files and I would add my email to process that and I would click request. But again, I've already downloaded this data to make this demonstration more fluid. So now that I have that downloaded data, I can go back to my GIS uh, project. First, I'm going to save the project. Always important to continuously save your project as you're working. And next, I'm going to go to the add raster layer and I will click on the ellipse and I will go to the Potomac Basin working folder and let's see now I'm going to go to the drainage direction and you can see we have two subfolders these are the subfolders that I downloaded unzipped and then added to my working folder in this case I'm going to add the project ADF I'll add that and the project ADF stands for projection.adf and I will do the same thing but this time with the the other raster file so this is the projection.adf and I will add this and now you can see we have uh, two files for drainage direction but they extend outside of our study area so the next step in the process is we're going to need to merge the two files that we brought onto our project. So to do that, we're going to go to raster and we're going to go to uh, miscellaneous and we're going to go to merge. This will combine those two files into one. So first we're going to select those two files that we just uploaded to the map and First, we're going to need to determine what type of data type we're working with. So if we go to information and we can see here in the data type, we're actually working with byte data. So when we go back to here, we're going to specify that in the output data type. And for the input pixel value to treat as no value, we're going to again add negative 999 and we're going to run this. We're going to save it as a temporary file for now because we're actually still going to clip it and take a subset of that based on our um, study area. So now if we uncheck the two files that we just merged, we can see we have one uh, merged file for the drainage direction um, for a lot of the mid-Atlantic region of the United States. But now what we want to do is take a subset of that uh, for just our study area, which is the Potomac River Basin. So to do that, we're going to go back to the menu bar, click on raster, and we're going to go to extraction. And this time we're going to choose clip raster by mask layer. Uh, for the input layer, <clears throat> we're going to use the temporary file that we just merged. And then for the mask layer, we're going to use the Potomac Basin. Um, for the source, um, this is optional, but we're going to specify it just so we can have a high level of specificity. Uh, for the no data value, we will use negative 999. And again, we are going to uncheck the box for matching the extent of the clipped raster to the extent of the mask uh, layer. And let's see. All right, we're going to come down here. Um, and then now we're going to specify the where we're going to save it to. We're, again, it's going to be in our working folder. And this time we're going to call it uh, drainage drainage direction and we will save that and we'll make sure yes the file path is to our working folder and we will click run and didn't take long to process and finish and now when we uh, unclick the merged layer we can see we now have a uh, clipped uh, drainage direction file which is uh, delineated to the Potomac River Basin. So now what I'm going to do is remove the three intermediary files. So just to clean up the, um, the layer panel. And you can see we have values of one to 128. 
This is a base two system, which defines the direction of flow from each cell to its steepest downslope neighbor. You can see this in the picture below, where each of the numbers from 1 to 128 uh, corresponds to the direction of flow from the river, again, from its um, higher elevation to its lower downslope neighbor. Next, we're going to rename our layer. We're going to call this drainage direction. And next, we're going to symbolize the layer to give it a little bit more context. So in this case, on the render type, we will call single band pseudo color. And we will make sure that the min max is specified as 1 to 128. For the mode, we were going to define it as quantile. We're going to give it eight classes. And then we're going to make sure that the values are all represented. So again, we're going to be a base of two. So 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128 are all counted for. And then we're going to click Apply and OK. And now if we zoom in, we can see that the uh, the values here, if we start selecting different values, are based on the direction of flow. So if I zoom in a little bit more, we should be able to see that a little bit better. So again, we will use the selection tool and we can see that um, you know, value 1 is draining to the east, value 2 is draining down to the uh, southeast, uh, value 32 is draining to the um, to the northwest. So this, in theory, should be a ridge line, which it is if we turn off the layer. So we can see that the direction of river uh, rotter is flowing away in opposite directions, which is what we just saw here. So that's an example of how one can use the drainage direction layer. So now we have successfully, first I'm going to save my map project, we have successfully uh, delineated uh, river basins and subbasins based on a geographic location. Uh, we have also delineated the uh, flow or drainage direction of uh, surface water within this river basin. Now the rest of the steps are not uh, requisite to perform further analysis, but they will aid in the visualization and communication of, of the data. So what we're going to do now is go back to the HydroSheds website and we will go to the river network and we're going to want to download the 15 second resolution and we'll select the North American River and click download selected. Just as before you'll enter your email, click submit request. I have already gone through this step and the last uh, data that we're going to download is the void filled elevation and we will choose the elevation three second resolution and we will go to North America. And again, we're going to select the same 5x5 five five tiles, which are SRTM tiles that we selected from the drainage direction. So again, that was North 35, West 80. And we're also going to select the North 40, West 80. And now that we've selected those, again, we will click on the down selected files, add the email, and download them. But again, I have taken this step for the expediency of time. So now we're going to bring the uh, vector layer of rivers into our map. And that was saved within our working folder. <clears throat> And it was saved under River Network. And then we can add the shape file. And you can see we have a network. If I zoom out, we have a river network for the entire North America. Not what we want. So again, we're going to take a subset of this. So if we go to Geoprocessing Tools, and if we go to Clip, we will clip this river network, again, by the Potomac Basin. And we're going to specify the file path, again, it's going to go to our working folder. So we're going to call this rivers. And we will save this as a shapefile. And we will run. And 
Now if we remove the continental layer, we can see we now have, if we zoom to this layer, we now have a river network uh, delineated. If I rename it and re-symbolize it, it will show up a lot better. So I'm going to symbolize this as blue, and now you can see the river network within our river basin, and I'm also going to rename this layer, and we're going to call this rivers. So that's a good, valuable uh, layer to be able to work with, and again, this was also derived from the SRTM data set, uh, which you can find from the HydraShed's website. The last thing we're going to do is we're going to take the downloaded uh, elevation data that we just got from the HydraSheds, and if I scroll to that, again, this is going to be the DEM, Digital Elevation, and we're going to choose the projection.adf, we'll add that, and we're going to add the other raster as well, and once that's added, we're going to merge these in the same way that we merged the uh, drainage direction files. To do that, we'll click on the raster and we'll go to miscellaneous and then to merge. And when that window comes up, we will input the layers that we are trying to merge. These are the two elevation layers. And we're going to want to specify, first we're going to need to check what type of data type it is. So again, if we go to information on the layer and we look at um, the data type, we can see that it's a 16-bit uh, signed integer. So we'll go back to the output data type and we will specify that as 16-bit signed integer. We will leave the rest as the default because we are just going to create a temporary file. So once this is all done running, we will see we now have a merged file in our uh, layer. And now we're going to clip the elevation uh, on the um, based on the Potomac Basin uh, shapefile. So we're going to go back to raster extraction, clip raster by mask layer. We're going to add the merged layer, and then we're going to add the Potomac Basin layer. We'll specify the source and the target as WGS84. We will specify the no data value as minus 999. Again, we're going to uncheck the match the extent of the clipped raster to the extent of the mask layer. And then we're going to go down and we will specify where we're going to save the file. Again, this is going to go into our working folder. So we'll call this DEM for digital elevation model. <clears throat> and then we will click run. And as soon as this is done running, we will uncheck we will uncheck the merged layer and we can see that we now have a clipped digital elevation file to our river basin and now we're going to rename that and we'll call this DEM for digital elevation and we will remove the intermediary layers because we don't need those anymore <clears throat> And now lastly, for visualization purposes, what we're going to do is we're going to create a duplicate layer of the DEM, and we're going to drag that to the top of the, to the, top of the uh, layers panel. And then we are going to symbolize this with properties. And actually what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of this layer panel and we're actually going to go up to layer and we're going to show the panel for the layer styling and once that comes up we will expand it so it's much larger and then from the top we're going to add DEM copy which is already selected <clears throat> then we're going to add the hill shade and then for the blending mode, we're going to add multiply. And then we're going to click apply. And then for the other DEM, we're going to symbolize this through properties. And this time, we're going to go single band pseudo color. 
And for the, the color ramp, we're going to click the drop down. We're going to create a new color ramp. And from this, we're going to go to catalog CBT city. And when that window opens up, we're going to go to the topography elevation. And when we bring this up and when we enter it, we can now see that we have an we can see that we have symbolized the digital elevation model and now when we click on the copy we can see we have a very nicely hill shaded um, topographical service which is really good for visualization so I will zoom back to the extent so now we can see that we have a uh, a very nicely visualized uh, digital elevation model with hill shade we also have a river network for our study area as well as a uh, drainage direction file. And we have the uh, river basin with all the associated sub-basins delineated. So that is the end of this demonstration. I want to thank you all, and I hope you got a lot out of it. And we also have a very detailed step-by-step -step tutorial for a different river basin, uh, the San Francisco River Basin in, in Brazil. And that is going to be on the RSET website. So if you want to replicate any of the steps uh, to, to try it out, to, to do it yourself and, and to play around with the data, definitely go to RSET, RSET's website for this training, and you'll be able to uh, find that tutorial there. So thank you very much, and I will now hand it back to Amita. Thank you, Sean. Uh, that was a great demonstration. And uh, if you have any questions, please type them in the chat box and uh, we will try and address those as best as we can. Also, um, want to point out two things here. One is that all the presentation slides are available um, in Spanish and you can find them on our set, uh, website. So um, if you would prefer reading this in Spanish, you can use that also. Uh, the tutorials are available in Spanish also for um, if you want to use, if that's your first language and if you want to use that, please go to the RSET website and download the information in, in Spanish. Uh, next, uh, before we go to the question answer um, session, uh, there's an announcement we want to share with you. Uh, RSET is planning an advanced webinar uh, on uh, iMERGE data set, uh, which is uh, the GPM multi-satellite merged data. And uh, that will be conducted in January. It's a specific focus here would be to learn to uh, do statistics of this data, as we have now long-term, almost 20 years of precipitation data available, which is combined of uh, TRIM and GPM uh, satellites. Um, and then we will have algorithm available for calculating standardized precipitation index. Uh, these uh, indices uh, based on precipitation data are used for identifying uh, dry and wet period uh, within a uh, long time series. So that's the focus of uh, that webinar. So please stay uh, tuned. The, the webinar is already announced on our set website, so you can register for the website, uh, for the webinar. Um, in this webinar, the idea was to present uh, HydroShed database where river basins are already delineated. Uh, this comment I see, it says, this is simply putting the files and not the delineation. And the expectation was that uh, uh, we would go through processes involved in each level of delineation. Um, so in one hour webinar, that's, uh, not possible to address actual delineation or how it's done. But if you see there is a HydroShed documentation provided here in, in this link is provided documentation that guides through each step. Uh, if you go through that, um, one can delineate uh, drainage basins based on SRTM, but to make them work for your own area, you do need additional information. You need to uh, uh, make hydrological adjustments so that there are no spurious um, delineation done. And that's really a very involved process. And you can look at this um, documentation about hydrosheds, how they do it. And one has to do that, that area in, in your own river basin. So the goal here was 
to actually use this database that already were uh, reverse are delineated. They are adjusted, uh, data voids are filled, also veg correction for different um, vegetation and coastal areas, they're all uh, done. So that's why the goal here was to present this. For most river basins, you should be able to use this uh, database. So we can uh, start with the question answer here. Some of the questions are listed here. Uh, so what is the difference between SRTM and DEM? So SRTM is um, it's a space shuttle a mission or radar that flew um, in 2000 and in space shuttle. So that's a we're talking about a sensor here, whereas DEM is digital ele elevation models. And uh, so DEM actually is used to create elevation data. So there is, there is sensor and observations, and then there is technique, which is DEM. So that's the difference. So, second question we have is, what is the difference between a watershed and a basin? Actually, they mean the same. We're talking about an area that drains into a common outlet. Um, so in when we talk about river basins as we saw river network can be very large with many sub basins many streams and tributaries going into the same common river so just to avoid confusion what we say is that river basin that's entire river network including streams and tributaries and so watersheds is within that river basin that drains into those tributaries so just to distinguish uh, what piece of area we're talking within the river network, we, we say river basin and watersheds. Definition is pretty much the same. It's, it's just the area that drains into a common outlet. But in one case, it's entire river basin with multiple streams, multiple tributaries, and individual piece of that we refer to as watershed. But they can be used interchangeably. Okay, so what is the smallest resolu resolution of basins which can be determined? So if you look at the um, uh, this document about how this data set was created, um, as Sean uh, showed here, uh, the, you need at least eight pixels around a center pixel to, to come up with the flow direction or drainage direction. And so that's the minimum you would need. So at 30 meter resolution from SRTM, you need at least nine, uh, uh, three by three pixels. But if you look at the procedure in this, uh, they recommend that nine by nine pixels centered at any pixel is ideal. Uh, different types of uh, correction and filtering are used. So um, my recommendation would be, so this is nine by nine pixels at 30 meter, would be say 270 meters square, so about 300 meters square would be uh, my my recommendation. And Sean, you can add to that. So question four, yes, uh, 55 square kilometer area um, would would be delineated by this tool. Yes. Do updated drainage basin exist for the entire world? Specifically, I wish to know if Cameroon has a drainage basin map with which is updated. And uh, Sean has replied here is that yes, you can download uh, this updated drainage basins. So um, in the presentation slides, in the appendix, there's information about SRTM. So if you, you know, if you would rather delineate your own river basin using DEM and you want to get the SRTM data, that is information about the data and how to access those data. And as you can see in there, almost 80% of the, the, the globe is covered by this data. So uh, yes, um, almost updated drainage basins are, are available for most of the planet.
so there are there are course resolution files i think 90 meter 100 meter uh, 500 meter uh, is also available i believe but we can check and uh, get back to that question this is question six okay sean you probably want to um, explain question seven Okay, thanks, Amita. Uh, so the question is, how can we generate a river network uh, from flow direction raster layer? Um, so yes, there are uh, there are tutorials online that we can do this. Uh, we did not have time to to go into that methodology in this. We were trying to show uh, participants today where to access the data directly from the HydroSheds database, but there are definitely uh, tutorials that would follow the same input files being the digital elevation model derived from SRTM, uh, that would be the base file that one would use to uh, to generate slope, uh, drainage direction, and all, ultimately to uh, derive the river network. So that is possible, and there's there's uh, there are a lot of online tutorials to be able to do that. But again, the purpose of this demo was to show how to access that data directly from HydroShed's database. Uh, is this process suitable for less steep regions? So if you see the presentation, um, you know, or you look at the HydroShed's manual, uh, you would see that if it's a flat area, data are less accurate, right? So that would depend on, on which region you're talking about. There are spurious uh, sinks or um, valleys though, that you find they're, they're not actually draining into um, outlet so in that case if it's very flat area i think um, knowing the area uh, also helps and literature is full of such examples um, again here for hydro sheds what you may want to do is actually try and delineate in in less steep area if you are from that area and see how best um, you can see water draining, drainage direction, and then um, there has to be some independent way of verifying that, I believe, I, I think, in, in from your in-situ data or your experience in your river basin. Uh, question nine, are there other tools that can be used with this data set, such as watershed area computation, uh, distance to stream, et cetera? I believe that watershed area you can compute uh, based on once you delineate um, watersheds in QGIS, you should be able to see um, how much area that has. Distance to stream. I believe that should be available from QGIS too, right, Sean? You can, you can. It's not. I don't see it directly available, but it, that should be a way. Um, yes, absolutely. To, yes, you definitely can do that. Uh, you can calculate distance uh, from uh, using QGIS. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so here's the reference for hydro basins or question 10. What in what parameters do you use to determine size of a basin, sub basin or micro basin?
recording of this webinar will be available online in in 24 hours or so so um, you can go go back and view the demonstration at your convenience later We want to thank you all for attending today's webinar. We also want to thank our RSA team members, um, Salvin Hudson odoy and David Barbato. Um, David is our Spanish translator. He, he provides us uh, with translation of all the presentation material in Spanish. And thanks Salvin for organizing this webinar. And again, if there are no more questions, uh, we would like to thank you all for attending today's webinar and um, this webinar is more or less a reference webinar so anytime you need to work with a river basin and you want to go back and uh, refresh how to use hydroshed's database uh, this will be available online thank you